Working as a forensic entomologist means I have to deal with insect specimens collected from corpses and carcasses. I examine flies and maggots collected from dead body. I can tell what species they are and I can give estimates to their age. Using this information, I can assist forensic investigators to provide a timeline closest to the actual time of death. When I first involved in forensic entomology more than 15 years ago, I have to get used with this foul smell of rotten carcasses. I've got to look at how an animal decomposed and being devoured by maggots until skeletal remains. This is what's going to happen to you and me and all of us and all living things after death, regardless the color of our skins, we live, we die, our body will rot and decompose. This is why I understand about death when I work in forensic entomology. However, after a decade, my perspective about what happens after death changes. All because of these little creatures known as the scutterflies. You may be wondering what scutterflies are and how they are related to forensic investigation. Let me tell you a story. In the eve of Valentine's Day a couple of years ago, I was requested by the police to assist the investigation of a suicide using smoke inhalation. Body of a young man was found in a bedroom of a three-storied house, completely shut from inside. Uh, even the gap underneath uh, the bedroom door was sealed with wet towel. I think that was to prevent the charcoal smoke from spreading to the entire house. The body was in a state of decay, but the conditions of the body and the room was somewhat clean due to the sealed condition inside the room. There was no insect activity that usually infest the corpse. Not even a single insect was found crawling on the corpse despite the conditions of the body. At the forensic department during post-mortem examination, forensic medical practitioner was surprised by the presence of very tiny maggots hidden deeply in the oral cavity of the deceased. I had to identify the species and estimate the age of the maggots. This information subsequently can be used by the investigators to investigate the time of death. Based on my assessment, the maggot belongs to a species of scutterflies known as Megacilia scalaris. And by examining the size and the condition where the maggot had lived, I came to the conclusion that the scutterflies began to live on the body not long after the young man contacted his family to bid the final farewell. Well, that was not my first encounter with scutterflies in forensic cases. Few years back, Similar species was found from a body of a murdered young girl left hidden in an abandoned housing project. And recently, at least two scutterfly species were recovered from human crops found hanging inside a sealed house. The story about these deaths was so tragic and I apologize that I have to share this with you. But the important thing that we can learn from this case was that even in death, when the corpses were thought to be so hidden and concealed, there were lives beyond that proved to be useful to us. In death investigation, scutterflies as Megacilia scalaris can be used as the primary organism as reference in time of death investigation. Because they can penetrate narrow openings in confined environments to reach corpses faster than any other common group of forensic flies because of its small size and perhaps because they already lived among us unnoticed. Well, scutterflies sits in the large group of insects known as diptera, with millions of flies and mosquitoes with so many remarkable features and purposes that live among us. And scutterflies belong to a group known as foridae. Scutterflies can be recognized by its small size, about a half and two and a half millimeter in size, humpback in appearance and run in erratic manner. And because of this, I believe that scutterflies are possibly the smallest forensic flies in the world. In Foridae alone, there are more than 4,000 species worldwide. And I am convinced that Malaysia is the habitat of terrific forms of scutterflies that flourish in various habitats, including death scenes. This is when and where my view about forensic etymology changes. I now see that this area is not only about death, but about the diversity of life that we can discover. Take Megacilia scalaris for instance, the species discovered from forensic case I mentioned earlier. It is a cosmopolitan species, meaning this fly lives in various suitable conditions all over the world. Ten years ago, uh, when I was about to start my PhD journey, I learned from my colleague that he encountered scutterflies in forensic cases. And he even wrote a paper on this and we learned that there were more species of scutterflies proved to be important in forensic investigation. 
other than megacilia scalaris, there are megacilia spiracularis and megacilia cotinura that also found to be abundant indoors. So, are there actually more scatterflies can be found living in decomposing humans or animal remains? After a great deal of discussion with my doctoral advisor at that time, Professor Baharudin Omar, we agreed to go deeper to the unknown world of scatterflies in Malaysia. It was a great risk considering the fact that Malaysian forensic entomologists and those who study about flies in Malaysia knew almost nothing about scatterflies, not even to be able to name them with confidence. Added by the fact that scatterflies are so complicated and difficult to observe. So is it true that even after death, the diversity of life can be observed from the life of these tiny and small scatterflies? To learn this uh, diversified life of scatterflies, I had to simulate human decomposition by using animal carcasses as baits and place them in various concealed environments. But of course, we had to apply it for animal ethics approval when we do these experiments. Some carcasses were placed in sealed waste bins and some were placed in old suitcases and there were a couple of animals were placed in uh, portable cabins. As expected, scatterflies were the first to arrive on those carcasses, making them the preferable choice of insects to be used as reference indoors and in concealed environments. But to have the skills to identify them, name by name, or knowing the species of these scatterflies, that would be another great challenge. To learn how to identify scatterflies means that you have to know how to describe them, classify them, and name them. In other words, I've got to learn about the taxonomy of scatterflies, meaning the art and science of naming living things. So in 2014, I managed to secure a research grant from UKM, which was enough for me to go to, to travel to UK and meet Dr. Henry Disney at the University of Cambridge. And he is the one of the world's expert in scatterfly species. Cambridge Museum of Zoology is currently home to collections of world scatterflies, including those from Malaysia and from Oriental region. Um, staying there for two weeks meant that I had to gain knowledge and wisdom from Henry on scatterflies as much as possible. But those were not the only thing that I learned from Henry. From Henry, I also learned about the meaning of passion, perseverance and consistence, values that are required to become a forensic entomologist. Again, all this for the sake of answering the questions, can scatterflies from decomposing human and animal remains show the sign of diversified life on Earth? Naming a scatterfly is a very challenging and meticulous process. So imagine that you have a scatterfly that is about a half millimeter small that you have to cut them pieces by pieces, segments by segments, in order to identify them. Very challenging, right? After a couple of weeks staying in Cambridge and another couple of months identifying the specimens back home, the results were so amazing. For the first time, we have found wingless scatterflies from Malaysia infesting dead animals like these three Pulisifora species. Females do not have any wings. But the interesting fact about this fly is that the male, which do have wings, can airlift the female to the crops or carcasses to help her finding food or location to breed. Apart from several new records, these four scatterflies were discovered living on animal carcasses in UK and Bangi. Two of the species were named after the locations, the Megacilia bangiensis and Megacilia selangorensis. This scatterfly was named Impalphora pahangensis, discovered infesting decomposing animal tissues from Fraser's Hill, Pahang. Not only just a new species, the Impalphora is a new genus being discovered in the family of scatterflies. It's like having a new branch just coming out from the family tree of scatterflies. Recently, we discovered the mysterious presence of Megacilia ocrasia from Peninsula, Malaysia. This happens after more than 100 years. It was first discovered uh, from Taiwan, but not elsewhere in the world. In another encounter, we recorded the presence of 
two scuttlefly species named Megasla dilatimana and Megasla phalloconsueta. These two species were previously known only restricted to the Seychelles island where it is separated by more than 5,000 kilometers of the Indian Ocean. Now Peninsula Malaysia is home to these two species. So what does it mean? It means that we still do not have any idea where the scutterflies come from and we still need to keep searching for answers about scutterflies, especially from death environments. Are they the best indicators of our biodiversity? Can they tell us how nature evolves? The example of scutterflies that I just show you, just a small fraction of more than 1,000 specimens collected for the past 5 years, representing by more than 30 species. There are dozens of scutterflies in our collections waiting to be described, and I believe there are more new species to be discovered and explored soon from that environment. So it is wonderful to see how forensic entomology can also lead to the discovery of new species and newly discovered species from this region. And these species are likely to be discovered on corpses as well. All I can say is that it is a very humbling experience to learn about the diversity of life after death, even from the eyes of scutterflies. In fact, it makes me feel very smaller than the tiny scutterflies because it gives us so many great lessons that we can discover what's out there and what to learn from our nature. And if you encounter decomposing human body, just call the police. But if you stumble upon decomposing animal, just appreciate the variety of life that lives in it. There might be species still unknown to us in both occasions. Just understand that nature is doing the job to bring balance to our ecosystem as there are a variety of life exists beyond death after all. And this is how the tiny scutterflies change my view about life after death.